Hi, if you've been following my channel for a while, you'll know that I was playing around with a Microtik 4G modem as a means to have a backup internet connection in case my usual provider has an outage for whatever reason. And it's particularly important at the moment, especially with a lot of people working from home, because if the internet service does fail, you are effectively isolated and possibly not able to work. And so today we're going to have a look at this offering from Banggood. It's the Mechzone 4G wireless modem, router and Wi-Fi access point. So it's got everything built in, in really quite a small compact form factor. It's currently selling for about $100, but you might be able to find a discount code to get it a bit cheaper than that. Um, and so it's got the specs here. This one is specifically designed for Europe, so it's got the various bands that I'm interested in. Uh, for the service provider that I use, which is 3, um, also sold on as Smarty, they use band 1, band 3 and band 20. So those are the ones that I'm particularly interested in. And you can see here, basically, it's got four LAN ports on the back, and then it's got four antennas. Two of them are for the LTE uh, interface, and then two of them are for the 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi. So this doesn't have 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi, but given the speeds that you like to get, I don't think that's going to be any kind of limitation. And just a quick word from our video sponsor, JLC PCB. They're now offering aluminium boards from just $2, which I think is incredible value for money. And if you take a look at the order page, you can see you can select the aluminium option here. They've got various options still available, although the selection is a little bit more limited than the FR4 board. So you can pick the thickness from 1 to 1.6 millimeters. You can still panelize the PCB and you can pick green, white or black. Sadly, no Enig option at the moment, but I think hot air solder level finish should be OK for most purposes. And you can see here a 10 by 10 centimeter board coming in at $2. And even if you increase this quite considerably, you can see the price is pretty good. A 300 by 300 millimeter PCB, which is really quite big. Five of those for $53, I think, is incredible value for money. So I'll put a link in the description down below if you are thinking about getting some aluminium boards made. And I will be designing some to see what the quality is like. So we'll see what they look like in a couple of weeks' time. Inside the box, you get the unit itself, which I think is actually really nicely made. Uh, we'll look at what the electronics is like, but certainly it feels like a quality piece of kit and it's also a really nice form factor. And what I was thinking of and why I liked this one is because it had these mounting holes. I might be able to fit this into the boot of my car. It's powered by 12 volts so I can use the 12 volt accessory socket in the boot, which only powers up when you unlock the car. And so we can have Wi-Fi whenever we're in the car for the kids' tablets and that kind of thing. I am going to be using one of these Smarty Sims again because they seem to work quite nicely and actually the, the prices are quite reasonable. And I'll put a link in the description if you did want to take a look at these. I think if you use that link, you'll get your first month free. Um, but given the prices here, you know, you can get 30 gigabytes for £10. That will probably do you for a month. And I think that's a fairly reasonable price for a couple of uh, happy kids in the back of the car watching their YouTube videos. Um, so the unit itself, then you get four antennas. Two of them are marked up 2.4 gigahertz and the other ones don't have any markings. They look identical, but probably the length is different inside the plastic housing. You get a very flimsy Ethernet cable. It's only got two pairs connected, uh, but they are only 100 megabit per second uh, LAN ports on the side. So you don't need all four pairs connected. You get the AC adapter, which feels very lightweight. So we will have a look inside this in a moment. Uh, the installation guide, you get some SIM adapters so that you can fit the right size into here. And then it also came with these two screws. I don't actually know what they're for. I've had a quick look around the unit and I can't see anywhere where you'd need two quite small screws. So I'm not really sure what they're for. Maybe we'll find out when we set this up. Inside the power adapter, it looks quite good actually. Normally the common mode choke is linked out, but they've still fitted that. So that's stopping switching noise, making its way back down to the AC network. Uh, we've got all of the components fitted that we'd expect. We've got a proper... Um, safety capacitor here across the transformer. We've got an isolation gap, which is nice to see, as well as a couple of slots where it's important. So they've actually done a reasonable job of designing this. Um, you can see they've got a little twisty trace instead of a fuse. But really, I think there's not too much to complain about here. I think probably the weakest link is going to be whether this transformer has been properly wound. But this is on the better end of the spectrum in terms of cheap power supplies from China. I'm not going to be using this one because it's got the wrong type of connector on here. So I'll just pick up uh, 12 volts, probably off the bench power supply for now to test this device. 
Inside the unit, this is looking like a quality piece of kit. The assembly quality is very good, so this isn't sort of a cheap PCB. You can see here that all of the connections and all the soldering and the layout actually is pretty good. Uh, we've got the SOC in the middle here, which is an MTK7620A. That has the 2.4 GHz radio built in, so you can see a couple of black coaxes here with the matching components on the PCB that has all of that built in. We've got um, 16 megabytes of flash here, some Winbond flash, and on the underside is 128 megabytes of DDR2 RAM. Uh, and you can see we've got various DC to DC converters. So I think we're, I wasn't able to find the part number that's on the SOC23 uh, switches, but these are obviously book converters. I think we'll probably be fine running this from 13.8 volts in the car as opposed to 12 volts regulated. Uh, and then the LTE modem is a little plug-in modem, so we can plug this in here. And interestingly, the screws that it was held in with match those in the little bag. So maybe with different open WRT firmware, we can support some different modems. This one is only a Cat4 modem. So although it supports download speeds up to 150 megabits per second and upload 50 megabits per second, it doesn't support carrier aggregation. So you're going to most certainly find that your speeds are quite a lot less than that. Uh, if you do have carrier aggregation, you're more likely to get those high speeds because it's able to aggregate across multiple bands. But although it supports those high speeds, I doubt we'll see anywhere near that. The manual doesn't really mention about the usage of the USB or SD card slots, other than it says you can use this to connect a USB disk or hard drive and the SD card slot to read media files. But I'm not really sure whether that means it can do file sharing or whether that is for firmware upgrades. So we've got the SIM card plugged in at the side here, so let's power it up and see what happens. It's drawing about 100 milliamps from the power supply. So it's been on about two minutes and I've not seen any change now other than the LED switching from the USB LED to the Wi-Fi LED. So let's connect to the configuration page and see what's going on. So here is the management interface for the router and it does look like it's picked up some information about the 4G interface. It's saying it's connected to Smarty with an 80% signal which is pretty good for my office downstairs. Um, and it does look like it's getting some traffic over the 4G interface. Maybe we'll just check whether it's actually working. So I haven't actually changed any settings here. This is just working as soon as I put in the SIM card. Let's see what speed we're getting here. So 17 megabits per second down and 7.6 megabits per second up, which is pretty good for where I am in the house. This has the weakest signal in this room. And also it's a peak time of day where we're probably likely to see most traffic on the 3G mass. So that's looking pretty good. We might just pop out and get closer to the transmitter and see if these speeds change. But it looks like it's done all of that without too much setting up really. I've just turned it on. Uh, obviously we do need to set some security on the Wi-Fi. Uh, and then it does have all the usual stuff that you'd expect. So you've got things like your DHCP server where you can set up the settings on here, static routes. Uh, it also has the ability to connect directly to the terminal. And we've got network address translation as well so that we can do all of that. On the advanced setup, we've got the usual firewall settings that we'd expect to see. Uh, service application. So you can manage this device through the cloud. I'm not going to enable that specifically. In fact, I'll leave that disabled so that it can't be wirelessly administered. Uh, and then we've got the various file set sharing settings. So this looks like if you plug in a SD card or a USB uh, hard drive, we can actually share these files on the network, which is quite handy. So it looks to be a fairly functional system. This isn't um, the original version of OpenWRT. This looks to be one that they have customized for this. Uh, but I think what we're going to do now is just check what the speeds are like as we change our location into an area where we get slightly better quality of signal. So I've just set up down a random road but this is actually the same cell tower that I'm connected to at my house pointing in the same direction and just here I've set up the 4G modem. So let's take a look at the speeds that we're getting. So as you can see despite us being much closer to the tower we're getting exactly the same speeds as before. So the distance doesn't seem to have made much of a difference and I suspect just because it's a weekday during the day we're seeing quite a lot of subscribers connected to this mass, so we'll try another one. So this time we've got a three transmitter on the top of a BT telephone exchange. 
It's giving 100% signal here, so let's have a look at the speed difference. And so as you can see, even at a different mast, you can see the speeds are fairly similar. However, I'm now back in the lab and it's just gone midnight and as you can see the speeds are considerably different. So we're getting much higher upload and download speeds so that really does suggest that 3's network is a little bit congested where I am. So I think what was quite interesting there is actually on the first mobile phone mast which is the one that I was connected to when I was back in my lab, the speeds were not that much different so it doesn't look like the distance played a huge factor in the speed there. Uh, and one limitation that I did find with this device is there's no ability from the web interface to set the band that it's connected to. So, uh, and in fact, you can't even view which band you're connected to. Now, you can send AT commands directly to the modem through uh, the SSH connection. But basically, if you ended up being connected to band 20, for example, which on 3 has quite a low bandwidth, I couldn't find a way to then drop that back to band 3 or band 1 where we've got 15 or 20 megahertz bandwidth and that would give us higher speeds. So that is one limitation that I found with this device. And as a point of reference, I did also take a measurement on my mobile phone, which is a much more capable device. And you can see at the first location, we're getting massive 224 megabits per second download, 31.4 megabits per second up. And at the other location, you can see we get 102 megabits per second down and 43.9 megabits per second up. So really quite impressive speeds. And I think that's partly to do with the modem. Possibly also there is something in the network that detects whether it's a mobile phone connected as opposed to a modem like this. However, when I then tether from my laptop, uh, from my phone through to the laptop, for example, you do sort of get those speeds in bursts but then it drops down to something a bit more like what you get from these. So I think there's a, a little bit of stuff that they do uh, to balance the traffic from these mobile phone masts anyway. So uh, I think possibly uh, if we upgraded this to a Cat6 modem, which it does support, we'd probably match those speeds that we're getting on the Microtip modem. I think there's probably some limitations just with the congestion on the free network during the day where I am. But anyway, I hope you found this review useful. I'll put a link to this device in the description down below. I think Banggood have got some offers on uh, for the next week or two now, so you might be able to find some discount codes as well. But I thought this was quite a decent form factor, and I'm definitely going to be installing this into my car so that we can have Wi-Fi wherever we go. Anyway, I hope you found the video useful. Don't forget to leave your comments and thoughts down in the comment section down below. And until next time, thanks for watching.